Hey everybody, Jay Widener, Reality Check. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, and all that. Um, today we got a real special guest, Jane Evershed. She is an artist and a really good artist. And I'll put the link up on the thing to her site, but she's really a really good artist. And uh, you guys know I don't like uh, shoddy art, so I'm, I'm not speaking out of turn here. Anyway, um, Jane has uh, some very interesting ideas and theories. She's also an art historian, besides being a really good artist. And um, and so I thought I'd bring her on and talk about some things. But first, let's go, go through a little bit of a history lesson before we, we talk. And that is, so in 1917, the, the Bolsheviks took over Russia. And when they took over Russia, they proceeded to create a bureau, a Politburo, that was designed to do nothing more than to destroy any evidence of a land called Tartaria. And they went out of their way to wipe it off the history books, destroy the maps and everything for reasons we can get into, but I have my own theories. Anyway, cut to 10 years ago in 2013, and Mad Vlad Putin released all these maps of, of Tartaria and really threw the whole alternative history world into a, a, a whirlwind as we all went crazy and tried to figure out what was actually going on here. And um, and then I heard your theory where you thought that you said you thought that the Renaissance was a reset. Absolutely it, was. Okay, and so are you saying it was a reset which took us away from the ancient Tartaria and put us into a new place? Yes, absolutely. There had been there had been a it was either Christian, like the true bloodline, the true Christ consciousness Christians had been living in peace for about a thousand years. Yeah. And then the feud started, it's called the feudal system came into being to slowly dig at them and start getting rid of them. And the crusades started in the like 10 something. Yep. And, and the Roman Catholic Church was sending out their so-called missionaries, which were really on a mission to take over the world and destroy all the indigenous people, all the beautiful people all the creative people, anything that threatened their domain so that they would be able to remain on top. And then when Putin came along, and we don't know which Putin it is, you know, we, you can go into that another day, but yeah. he definitely had a long-term agenda because his strategy what you can see that he had the strategy to take out the ruling satanic elite right from whenever he was put in. Because in 2001, he established BRICS. Obviously, you know, India, China, the, the largest countries in the world, he got them together. In 2009, they had a full scale diplomatic meeting in Russia. And then in 2013, he releases these maps of Grand Tartaria. And then in 2016, he kicks out all the Rothschilds and the whole central banking system and the new world order system and everything else and tells them they can never come back to Russia under any circumstances. Then come 2021, he starts routing out the Khazarian mafia in the Ukraine and reclaiming what was probably once Grand Tartaria. So you can see from that picture that the map release was a very strategic move in this ongoing game of, of world chess. All right. But also, right. can I just add to that? We can't really mention Putin without mentioning Fomenko, who, who is the one who looked at the history of Scaliga and, and revised it all when he saw that the stars and the alignments of astrology weren't lining up with what was happening on earth. That's right. And, yeah. So I won't go into too much detail about that right now, but. No, no, but it, it bears repeating. So what Fomenko did was when the uh, astronomy software first came out, <clears throat> he wanted, I think he was checking on the Peloponnesian war and there was two eclipses that hundreds of people reported on seeing during the Peloponnesian War, and he went back and he looked and there were not two eclipses 
that actually happened. But a thousand years later, there were two eclipses that happened on those dates. Right. Are you familiar with, uh, I'm going to goof his name up. Oh, I wish I wouldn't do this. He's a Polish statistician. And he his theory is, is that long about three, late 300s, early 400s, there was some kind of catastrophe. And we were thrown into total chaos. And we lost our histories and our calendars and everything. And then when we finally got it back together, a few hundred years later, we just they just rounded the year off to 1000, is what he said they did. And so they shortened the, ca the calendar was at like 700 years were added into the calendar it actually didn't happen. And, and that's his theory is that they, we just threw, we all just threw up our hand and declared that it was 1000 AD. Now, <clears throat> Volcanelli, the alchemist in his book, Mystery of the Cathedrals, definitely says that the Dark Ages weren't dark. He says that they were a, a time of, of prosperity and, you know, plump people and happy people and, and that it's all bunk what we're being fed about the Dark Ages. What do you say to that? Oh, I say that the Dark Ages started right with the Renaissance for us as human beings that were evolving. And and just the other day, actually, I heard you said it, Jay. It was on Jean-Claude's show. Well, it was really um, Veritas who broke the phrase. Uh, what was it about evolution? Um, Changing evolution? Directed, directed evolution. Oh, directed evolution. And I've been banging my head against the wall now for about three years saying that our positive evolution is exactly connected to our creativity, our creative currency. And I've been trying to relay the importance of art and what it really, really is. And I can't do it. It's the hardest thing you've ever tried to do because it's so ingrained in everyone that art is just a luxury. It's not that important. I can't even draw a stick figure, you know, that kind of thing. And really, this is why the Renaissance is such a powerful era because it took art, put it in a little box, tied a little bow on it, and it said you will never, ever understand the true purpose and the true meaning of art. So... Um, so it was almost as if, uh, uh, art became like corporatized, right? In the Renaissance. Um, and, well, I call it, um, classic generic because once you have a human body and it has certain measurements and it has certain muscles, mm -hmm. so you can ascertain all the proportions and, and you can interchange artists because you're never going to deviate from that measure. You are never going to insert the soul. You are never going to insert the part that is connecting to the cosmos that is dynamically putting that piece yeah, together. Very well said. So, so it was very easy for them to just go along. And in fact, the artists preceding the Renaissance, they never named their sculptures. They never named the artists. That's right. Because, because it was a part of life. You know, it was like making bacon and eggs in the morning or something they just made it and they used it to decorate because they understood the true purpose of art and so the the in the renaissance that takes on the art takes on a, 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 a almost a photographic quality it does yes and then we have the problem of leonardo's paintings only being a few microns thick which seems really kind of impossible if you're using oil paints. Um, well, now this is news to me, Jay. I'm learning something. Yeah, well, and, and if you look at Leonardo's paintings uh, as a photographer, and uh, a whole lifetime of being a photographer and knowing a lot about camera tricks and things, it looks to me like, okay, I'll just say it. It looks to me like Leonardo understood photography and he's putting his models like Mona Lisa in front of a photographic background, a landscape that he's photographed. And then he's using some technique that's, you know, to put the image onto the canvas that's very thin, super thin. The width of a human hair is what I'm talking about. Oh, my goodness. Have they overlaid it onto a thicker thing at 
in the in these times? Yeah, no, it's, it's how did you how did you six, find six out it was microns? A, how did you find out that it was only a hair's width thick? Well, I looked up what a micron was, how, how thick it was. So you know, but there's documentaries on about this, and uh, and we know from his books that he understood photography. He understood that you could take um, silver and and reverse it in chemicals and things. So he did understand photography. And but anyway, I want to get back to the this whole idea. So they the artists then started naming themselves like Raphael or whatever, and then they became like an industry, right? Exactly. Well, more than that, they were almost groomed because many of them, like Raphael, was an orphan and Michelangelo's mother died. And so they were groomed. So they were taken, uh, 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 homeless kids and taken into schools and taught these techniques. Right. And um, to what purpose? Well, it's just exactly the same as Hollywood or Soho, the Soho artists. You want those celebrities. You want to bring them forth as these amazing people that represent you and their greatness and how much they portray the greatness of the popes and how the popes are such philanthropists and they care so much about the arts for those reasons. And... Um... And then what happened? What happened to the uh, Renaissance? It just kind of faded out after a while. Um, that style of painting. Well, I would say what happened was that the the Medici's had almost a solid reign for three hundred years. There was twenty years in between somewhere where there was like the almost the real fall of Rome that they don't tell you about it was the sack of Rome in the four, I think it was fourteen twenty seven. And that's when the peasants revolted on these elite reptilians and really went after them. And, and they, you know what? That would have turned history around if those people had won. But we missed it. We missed that chance. And we really got to not miss this chance that we have. I agree. And so what would be the reason for them trying to wipe out the previous civilization from memory? Because they themselves wanted to don the mantle of being the, the great monarchies and the, every so that everyone must look up to them. So what they did is they went to the past, collected all the goodies of, of the, our ingenious race that once was, and, and put it out in front of everybody as if it came from them and their rule. Even the buildings, they stood upon the steps of all these glorious architectural wonders built by the Tartarians and proclaimed their greatness and decided themselves that they would be popes. Medici's were popes without ever having been bishops or cardinals or anything like that. Yeah, that's kind of my theory is that... Um the the Kazarian mafia doesn't want you to ever think that there were a people on earth that were more incredible than they are. Well, it wasn't really more incredible. We had to be scared of them too. Yeah. We had to worship them. You know, their churches, we had to pay them because they knew more than us. They knew about death. They could save our souls. You know, this is why they also use the um, work of the, of of the, especially Bruegel and all his hell and death painting. Yeah. They, that was like an, a giant ad campaign all across Rome. So they were bringing really purveyors of darkness, really, right? Well, absolutely, because the Pope actually said, I am above man, but below God. So that's where they fit in. And so that that made it real clear who was on, in charge. And you know, what's funny is <clears throat> they create this fake culture <clears throat> in, the, in the Renaissance, and then they created a fake culture here in our world in the 1960s. A lot of the bands were fake. A lot of the movies were fake. Uh, a 
lot of the things they showed us were fake. All of this I did to make them look like they were super powerful, right? Well, it's an alternate reality, I guess, they want us to live in and not our true reality. And the, their biggest... Um, their biggest desire of all was to prevent our natural organic evolution because we would be overriding them in 2.6 seconds if we ever got let out of that bag. So they have to keep us in there. And yeah. so we must always be wowed and awed by all the movies and their technology and everything they have. Yeah, I call it the great distortion. They're distorting reality to the point where, that we're just stupefied. And, and as we, as if we're stupefied, then we'll never ask the question, you know, who's given the orders here? And uh, so we don't ask that question. In fact, we don't even think about it. <clears throat> and <clears throat> this is what's going on today at every level in society. And art, you know, I don't know if you're aware. Have you been looking at some of this AI generated art that's coming out? Now? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've been. Look I've done a few videos on it. Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, first of all, their little trick was they made a little um, mannequin woman who was an artist, you know, like a real robot with yeah. claws for hands. And then she painted and we saw that and we were like, wow. And then meanwhile, they had all the technology to do what they do. And then now we've, we've reached a point where AI can just get into the entire system the whole record of anything that was ever photographed, including prehistoric paintings and caves and everything else, almost like an Akashic record, if you will, yeah. and go in there and steal. They can steal artist styles or anything they want, and then they can put that together in a collage and present it just by somebody typing in a couple of words, and you buy that AI program, and then it produces that image for you. And this is just rampant just inflammatory it makes me crazy because what about the original artist what about that artist what about their style what about copyright they've just skimmed all over that and just let their ai run wild uh well i'm glad you said that because i'm really worried about what i'm looking at and um i <clears throat> know someone who got on chat gpt the ai software and he told me that he asked it to write a 312 page novel that makes it sound just like Stephen King. And he read me it back to me over the phone. I, I was floored. I, I mean, I thought it was a Stephen King novel. And here's the kicker because he asked Jet Chat GPT to do it, he owns the copyright <laughs> just because he asked the AI to do it. No, it's his. Yeah. That's crazy. We we should be very worried right now because our creativity is being so usurped. It's almost like AI has taken a giant leap ahead of us. And what what's happened is the past uh, probably 15 years, all we've had is raising generations doing this, where they've got this programming constantly coming in and there's no way that they can actually express their own creativity from within out into the world. So we've had this one way insult of their idea of what the world should be about. And our way of what our idea of what the world should be about has just got a big X on it right now. And this is another reason that I'm going crazy trying to tell the whole world how important art really is yep. because it's so connected to our creativity well, and, and yeah. I it, 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 art is supposed to uh, make us better as human beings That's well what it's, 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 it's a lot more than that actually um, if you don't mind me expounding on this minute please so art is alchemy Yes, and so what it teaches you at a young age, you know, you're better off learning art than you are English or math, in fact, because what art does is it teaches the child to take elements and arrange them into a composition that is harmonious and balanced. 
And also as they're creating, you lose time when you create. And so now you're connected to the cosmos as you create and you lose time, you're making this thing. Now, what, what you've made really doesn't matter. It's when you become an adult and you apply that alchemy to the world around you by saying, oh, I'm going to take the ether out of there and I'm going to channel it down this mercury pipe here and then I'm going to make this and I'm going to create all these things so that I live in an aesthetically beautiful environment. Absolutely. So whatever it is you're into, whether it's science, cooking, gardening, that's what you're doing. If you've learned art properly and studied it as a child, and all we have today are little gimmicks and games and splatting paint on and dripping it and pouring it and things like that, that's not, that isn't teaching us those essential elements of art like light and dark and composition, proportion, perspective and all that. Absolutely. Um, super important to have <clears throat> uh, uh, an aesthetically pleasing environment. This is like it, it, the difference between not being in a sterile environment. And, you know, we have paintings all around our house. And um, uh, I see that. Yeah. Been collecting art for years and years and years. The art that I like anyway. And <laughs> um, <clears throat> and, you know, I preach on this program all the time that. Yes, we live in the Kali Yuga. There's no doubt about it. <clears throat> but you can make a golden age inside where you live. You can, <laughs> I love that. Yep. You can bring in, like, we have all over our house, we have these crystals. Oh, yeah. The pyramids everywhere. We probably got about 50 of these everywhere, tucked in corners and bookcases. And, you know, I just try to create this environment. And people say when they come in our house, wow so peaceful in here right and um and so you have to do that and so how do we reverse all this i mean we're heading down this path where ai is is literally going out of control and i want to emphasize that um as a person who is a a programmer and programmed computers in my life i can tell you that all a computer is is a very fast calculator okay just a very fast calculator it's never going to be sentient. Never. I guarantee you, it's a mythology. It can't happen. You cannot take something that doesn't have a body, that doesn't interact with the nature and the environment, and have consciousness. It will never happen. However, that doesn't mean AI is not dangerous. It's still dangerous. And it's dangerous in the ways that we're talking about, in the ways it's going to steal our creativity, in the ways that you're going to be reading an article on the internet and you're not even going to be sure if it was written by a human now same thing well 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 this is exactly my point we have to get rid of these luciferians that want to turn us all into their little ai digit they 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 did the digitally trafficking 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 us right now you know what i mean we're being trafficked yeah so this is what we have to get rid of. And I do believe we are getting rid of it. I believe this is happening in the undercurrent world. The white hats are going out there and they're, they're finding them and taking them out. They're down in the dumps. They're in the halls of Congress. They're all over. It's happening right now, but we just aren't hearing about it. Well, I know you're right because I can judge by their reaction that there's something they're very afraid of very afraid of and I, I have insiders who tell me they don't know what it is they're afraid of but i think they're afraid of us i think they're afraid that we're going to wake up one day and you know i i saw a video the other day of uh, justin trudeau trying to leave a restaurant in canada and he literally had to call a hundred cops in to create a gauntlet for him to go through to get to his car and, you know, that's what's going to start happening all over the place is that people are going to have. And here's the other thing. This is a thing that is like the secret time bomb. The normies, everybody knows I call them the, the, the people that are, don't believe in what we believe in as normies. The normies only stay normies until something so big gets in their way that they finally notice it. Then they change this. Um, the injuries 
that are going to occur and are occurring over what's been going on over the last two years is going to be the fulcrum that's going to turn the normies into awake and enlightened people. I really do believe that. When people near them start going away, when they don't feel as good as they used to, and they wonder where it went and why the people they know who never got anything are doing just fine, it's going to become apparent what, what's going on. Well, I think that that is a very crucial element of it. However, the denial level is so vast that that may not be unless, you know, your own sister drops dead right in front of you. And I'm thinking that, you know, they've been shown that the child trafficking was so bad. They've been shown the adreno. They've been shown it all. And they haven't done anything yet. And I think the final one has to be the one connected to their status, which would be their financial situation, which would mean crashing the whole system where they finally, that will wake them up. You can't feed your child. You can't go anywhere. You can't pay your rent. Okay, well, why? Oh, suddenly let's start looking into this, you know? <laughs> I think that's the last stand. I and it's coming it's, soon. It's coming. We're pretty close to that right now, I think. Um, right now, Social Security is running out of money. Um, just a whole lot of things happening on several fronts that are not good. And, and, and you're right. That's going to be the final one that wakes everybody up. Uh, but what do we do when we wake up? You know, <clears throat> what do we do? Well, we're going to be turning on the system and then creating our own systems. I think it's going to, it's not going to be so much as a looking up to, it's going to be as a looking within to create the environment and the communities that we actually want, we can rely on. We know these people, they're part of our community and we um, all have our own talents and expertise to bring to any community. I agree with you. I, I tell people in my community here, you know, that if you're good at math, um, you're going to have to be called on to become a math teacher here and you're not going to get paid. Uh, it's all going to be voluntary and we're all going to have to do it. Uh, there's not going to be, you're not, it's going to be so expensive to just send a kid to school that people aren't going to do it. And um, so everything is shifting and it's moving into a more localized, decentralized environment. Uh, and yeah, we got to make our own art. That's what we have to do. We can't rely on other people to entertain us with their art. Everyone should have a creative life. Spend an hour or two a day doing something really creative. It really helps you out, believe me. Well, it's not just the art, you know, it's what learning art does to the whole human being as a whole, you know, being able to just take elements and pull them together in order to not just survive, but live in a beautiful environment. You should, and, teach, and a, that, you should teach an but, online class. Well, I have, tr it's very, very difficult, you know, it's very difficult to get, just to make even a crack in the dent of everything that's out there. But I have, I do at the uh, New Earth University, I have taught a few classes there as an art faculty member of the New Earth University. You know, Sasha Stone's New Earth thing that yeah. he does. Yeah. So I'm part of that. So I've got a little, little tiny door to go through there. And I have my YouTube channel, which I put my videos out. And even that, it's just so hard. <laughs> you know to make a dent in the world today yeah there's so many things going on so many distractions and but um I, i'm of the belief that if you keep trying you'll eventually hit the right audience so um yeah so <clears throat> you uh um you said somewhere i heard you say that um you thought that the um the sculpturing, the sculptures of the Renaissance were maybe not using the techniques that we think they were using. They were using some other kind of techniques. Yes, um, actually, there are some sculptures that are so perfect in every way. Like yeah. you can see this, the stitching on the clothing, and and there's 
two sculptures of the young girl and she has a little curl right in the middle of her forehead and in one picture she moves, the curl moves and the, the next picture is snapped. And the, you've, I, I've seen these sculptures side by side in photographs and I know that one sold recently at Sotheby's and the thing about this is they had that technology, just as you were talking about the painting technology earlier with with Leonardo's paintings being a micro whatever thin, okay. yeah. they, they had all this, they had it, and they've hidden it from us like they hide everything from us so that we can never get ahead and that they can control our evolution. So this would be some kind of, 3D printing kind of technology. It must be. Yeah, and it's marble. And there's this incredible sculpture of a fisherman. Yes. Have you seen that one? That yeah. In the in a chapel in Naples. And there's no way that the marble is so soft you could never have chiseled that that rope that to that degree and to that correctness. No artist could physically construct that. Yeah, and then um, I was looking at a, a piece of art today from, they said 5,000 years ago in Egypt, and it was a medallion and, uh, in rock of some kind and a marble. And it was, it's impossible. The, 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 the art is impossible. You would have to chip, that marble should be chipped because it's so intricate. This, and this is 5,000 years ago. So I have a theory that there's some place on earth, I call it an undiscovered country, okay? And it's probably out in the South Pacific or something. And it it's where the people that that live that were here before the catastrophe where they live. And they've kept all of this ancient technology going. And sometimes they interact with us. We think they're aliens and UFOs and sometimes or angels or whatever. Uh, and I believe that they are uh, behind our religions. Um, I believe they're, um, I can actually prove that, that there's uh, some kind of human inspired force behind Islam, Christianity, Judaism, and even Hinduism. And, um, and, and, and they're pushing us someplace, and we don't know where they're pushing us. They're moving us to someplace in a psychological, spiritual place, uh, and we're just more or less left in the dark as to what's really going on. I don't quite, I'm not quite understanding if their purpose is on our behalf or they're, they're working on behalf of some, some other entity. No, we are there. In my theory, we are their farmers. They're breeders, um, uh, who knows what else, right? And if you look through history, you'll see that in every culture, the gods are demanding food from humans. In India, they would demand that the food be put in front of a cave, all the wheat and the cows and everything, and then they would be gone. Like the next day, they would be gone. Right. And this this is all over the place. Native Americans have the same thing. You had to make sacrifices to the gods of some for some reason. Right. And so I think we're, we're more or less just being used by this very upper level. Pretty much all knowing group of humans who has high technology and we, we well, see this high technology in our past. Well, I think that that technology was once ours. And they are unable to create such beauty. And in fact, they are not creators themselves and they use us to further their agenda. So I can't connect this high tech, um, this high technology that they have with them. It's always stolen with them. It's always usurped with them. Yeah. So the, they either got it from somewhere or they either took it from us and they then they changed us. our DNA so that we would never understand it or remember it or know it, you know, just like they change our food and put GMOs in our food and they've slowly been dumbing us down over all these years, but they can never, ever rise above and we will win 
and this purely because we are divine and we are aligned with the stars and we're moving into this age of Aquarius right now and it is beyond their purview to connect heaven and earth and because they have no divinity and our divine source that takes care of us as humans is going to propel us forward and beyond them and we see them now nothing more than a useful part of our human evolution because their darkness almost gave us all the light that we now see streaming into earth and the new resonances from the sun that's healing our DNA and the veil obviously lifting so fast now. So I just laugh at them now at this point. Well, they're pretty pathetic, I got to say. <laughs> uh, the thing that I've noticed, though, is that they're not, um, you know, I've been around a long time watching this, and um, they used to try to hide. They used to try to hide, and then they would call you names if you brought up anything. And now I notice that they're no longer using the names that they used to use, and they're no longer trying to hide. Uh, it's just kind of obvious to everybody. It's all out in the open now, and everybody can kind of see there's somebody pushing the buttons here, and I think we even know who they are. So um, my theory also is, is that the closer we get to the, uh, the Great Awakening, the more the garbage they're going to throw at us. Uh, they're just going to keep throwing more and more philosophical psychological spiritual garbage at us to confuse us and um that's one of the reasons i like have people like you on because you know i, I got to find a way to counteract all the uh, darkness that they're spewing out right now yeah we have to learn to be like do jujitsu against all the perversions that are coming at us at such a rate at this point but that's because i heard they speeded it up they had to speed it up so fast because it got messed up when you know who came in and started kicking people around so uh, yeah that's exactly right they they lost four years first off Right. Um, that really hurt because it was supposed to all be done by uh, uh, 2024 or so. And that's not going to happen. And um, <clears throat> there's a lot of. A uh, lot of funny roadblocks being thrown in their way. That's all I'll say. And uh, it's as if we're getting help from something somewhere who's decided, you know, not to intervene, but to pull tricks on them and things. And now we have the Pope, too coming out and pretty much announcing that he's all all on board with the wef and it's like really you know well he always was right from this get-go you know when they were sitting over there in rome during the renaissance pointing their fingers and telling everybody where to go and what to do and appointing kings and queens all over europe by divine right and all this, everybody can see it now. The emperor is standing naked. You know, he's old, but he's not ancient. And this is when they rewrote the history books, right? During the Renaissance. Right, smack dab in the middle of the Renaissance. They threw the new Bible out there, the new history. A Machiavelli popped up right then and there, taunting his tyrannical ways. And, you know, the, uh, Le Principe or whatever it was, the prince... Yep principles everything came out of the renaissance because they had realized and studied our psyche so well and they knew that we were a compassionate but very easily fooled race and they took everything i call it academentia they took all our studies right. and served them up to us and told us this is how it's going to be now. And we we thought they were so great. We were like, okay, that, wow, wow. You know, and on and on we went listening to their philosophies. And But then what happened was they, they messed up royally themselves because they excluded all the indigenous teachings and they excluded women. So now they've excluded over half the world's population from the debate or the dialogue of their grand philosophies. So now your all philosophy is actually moot. 
without the input over all those years of those peoples in our evolution. And it's only lately that women have been even allowed in power because now at this point, uh, those women can only serve their agenda because there is no other direction or trajectory they could go on. That's absolutely right. They've, uh, the, the, you can't get out of it. That's the whole thing. When, once you're accepted into this group, you never get out until you die. That's the thing you have to remember. That's why our president, I mean, he's 80 years old, man. Go retire. You got plenty of money. He can't. Pelosi. Pelosi's got $340 million. She's 82. Go travel to Europe. Have a good time. Nope. Got to stay on the job. And it's the way all the way up the ladder. And you can't get out unless you either die or fake your death. And um, there's a lot of that going on, too, by the way. So uh, I, I'm with you. I believe that um, I see vast evidence of the Great Awakening. Um, I'm old enough to remember when no one was talking about these kinds of things. And now everybody's talking about it. So, you know. No, not enough people are talking about it. Not yet. But... The thing is, is that you don't really need to have, it's not numbers, it's quality, not quantity. So it's, it's, an, it's, it's if you have all the articulate uh, thinking people, that's a lot, and say it's only 10% of the population, that's worth 80% of the population because they can articulate the problem and articulate the solution. So, and I'm with you, I think the solution is in art and creativity especially with our young people who are really suffering right now. Yeah, well, in the um, to that end, I actually wrote a constructive book. It's called Splat, and it just teaches you the basics of art. Anyone can use it to either teach their kid the basics of art or learn them themselves. And I have this phrase called the art frozen, and you can unfreeze the art frozen by going back and revising the basic steps and, and restarting that because let's face it, people are um, very art shy and they're, they're not quick to say I'm an artist, you know, they, but everyone really is born an artist. There's that whole NASA study that was done where we, we were born 98% of us geniuses and by the time we're adults, it's dropped all the way down to 2%. And then when you look at... Um, that what's his name with the M and he, he did the pyramid, the the needs pyramid. I forget his name right now, but anyway, on the top of that pyramid is creativity right next to ascension. Yeah. So it's we know this, but it's never implemented and it's absolutely kept out of the schools. And you and I know that what they what they're doing in the schools now is is just absolutely sinful, trying to, you know, make boys into girls and girls into boys and all of this which to me is you know when you when you have the mating call of birds the bird is absolutely attracted to the feathers and the way the bird flies and its actions well they're just cutting off that natural procreational attraction thing because as you and I know too they want to decrease absolutely the population because they're big aim was to get us all down to 500 million people as per the George Guidestones which have been blown up which is a damn good sign to me yeah the um the well I think the ultimate game with the fudging of male and female and by the way one of the uh, underlying rules of the natural world, according to alchemy, is that everything has a feminine and a masculine side, period. It's, that is like, if there's five rules, that's one of them, okay? And so they're trying to actually break the natural law with this. But what right. I think is really going on, and which is kind of scary, I'm going to have to be careful here how I say this. I think that they're fudging the difference between men and women and say acting like well there really isn't any difference even though there is um is for later when they begin fudging 
the difference between children and adults. That's about all I'm going to say about oh. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they want to cause that kind of confusion later. So later, and I'm talking maybe a year from now or less, you're going to start seeing the fudging of children and adults and what they really are and the separation between the two and all that's going to begin the fudging because that's the ultimate end of this whole thing is to normalize all of that i believe right. <clears throat> well in the renaissance you know they had a thing called pederasty where the man would be the the mentor to the young boy and so Absolutely. on Bacchus fact, and his liberty the word liberty which liberty is a renaissance concept comes from libertine which is that a, a, a man, essentially a man, can go and do have any kind of sex he wants. This is essentially what a libertine is. And that's where the word liberty comes from. So um, uh, the church was all for this. And the priests were all running around doing all of these things and doing terrible things. And it was all legal and perfectly fine with everybody. Um, in fact, when I was a young man, when I was maybe around 12 or 13 years old, I distinctly remember uh, uh, somebody in Congress making a, a, a joke about raping a 13-year-old and getting everybody laughing in Congress. And I remember hearing the adults talk about it, quite openly, in fact, about having sex with younger people. And... Um, and then that kind of drifted away and it stopped. It was like uh, somehow it became uh, uh, bad in society to do that, which is a good thing. But it was a lot more open 50 years ago than we think. It wasn't this uh, puritanical society that everyone thinks America was. Underneath the veneer of that puritanical society was a seriously sick place. Well, as long as these Luciferian satanic people are in charge it's going to remain that way so that's what we have to get rid of yeah and so um it's it's you know i really i i don't really think that evil exists in nature in other words the bald eagle is very beautiful when it's flying in the sky but it's really looking for a rabbit to get kill Right. But that's not evil. I mean, it might be to the rabbit, but it's survival. Not it's just survival. But evil exists within the human uh, psyche. A real, true evil does exist. And that evil is best described, uh, 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 can best be described as, are we protecting our children? If we are not protecting our children from all harm, then we're committing evil. And that's the only way I can look at it. And that's my definition of it. If you're not protecting- Well, the I mean, you can look at it in another way, Jay, because you know, when a country goes to war with another country, we say we are at war, yet it's people will, will say, no, I am not at war. I never organized that war. I never wanted that war. We don't want this to be happening. So we cannot take on that evil part. I, I refuse. There are evil people out there doing very evil things, but certainly not on my behalf. No. No, no. And, um, well, you know, I just don't know how we're going to do it, but I believe you're right. I believe we are going to win. Okay, well, I don't know. It's magic the way it's going to happen. I'm sure some, we will have interference from the heavens, I'm sure. Whether it's a planetary explosion or the, the sun flare that's supposed to blast us all into awakening or whatever it is, it's coming and it's exciting. And it's absolutely exciting to be alive right now on this planet. I agree. It is really uh, great to be alive. And I really appreciate you coming on Reality Check, Jane. It's been really fun. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed it. I, I have watched your work very long ago, and I, then I didn't know where you went. And then I saw you recently pop up on Jean-Claude, and it was one with uh, Janine. Yeah, Janine, yeah, she's great. Janine, and you know what? I've been trying to get hold of Janine. I don't know how to get hold of her because 
I would just love her to do a tarot reading on whether or not Michelangelo did those sculptures, because I believe he didn't. So this is the question I would pose to her if ever I had the good fortune of either meeting her or being able to be in contact with her. Well, I'll send this along to Jean-Claude and Janine, and I bet you they'll, they'll want to talk to you because that's a great uh, idea for uh, them to do a show on. Oh, great. I would love that. Uh, Thank you. Let's try to find out how uh, Leonardo did his paintings, too. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we'll both go on and ask questions. Chance yeah. of a lifetime. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jane. Thanks for uh, coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me, Jay. Bye. Hi, everybody. I'm Jay Widener. This is Reality Check. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. And I will be back at some point. Thank you very much.